we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Don't get deep this morning. <laughs> it's supposed to. It's supposed to. Let me tell you something. I guarantee. If you don't learn nothing this morning, if you don't learn nothing this morning, I never press this button again. I never press it again. I will never, ever. If you don't learn nothing today, I'll never press it again. Come on, Mike. What you doing, baby? That's old. I don't want to see that. I want to see what's happening. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I promise you, if you don't learn nothing today, I'll never press that button again. Never, ever. I'll never press it. How we looking? We looking good? Look all right. We straight. We good. We're gonna get into some real, real, real deep teaching this morning. We're gonna break some stuff down. I, I, I believe I believe after this morning, you all will have a better understanding of everything. Everything. The world, the Bible, stuff that's been said, being said, going to be said after the day. I'm going to go in that 17th chapter of Revelation and run it. Just off that 17th chapter. But I'm going to touch the 16th chapter and I'm going to touch the 18th chapter. But I'm going to take you all the way to the 10th chapter of Genesis. But then I'm going to go in the 12th chapter of Genesis. To all the way go back to the 6th chapter of Genesis. Then we're going to wind up in Jonah. We're going to deal with Nineveh. But then we're going to go in Nahum. But when we come out of Nahum, we got to go in Peter, the 5th chapter. Now, but we're going to deal with the 2nd and 12th chapter of Corinthians. 2nd Corinthians, right? So now, but we starting in the 17th chapter of Revelation. But yeah, we're going to go all the way to the beginning of the book. Why? Because the 17th chapter of Revelation deal with false religion. And if you don't understand false religion, okay, now watch this. Peep gang. Serious gang. Here it is. We sit in church. We learn about a hereafter. We learn about salvation. We learn about peace. We learn about you're going to have this and that. We learn all that stuff, right? Now, this is the key. What if it's false? What if it's coming from false religion? Now what? Now what? Because if you don't know false religion and you believe in that foolishness, how are you going to know what's happening? See why I come the way that I come? See why I break the book down for you like I break the book? See why I say the things that I say? So now... If he over there teaching false religion, he probably don't even know it. She teaching false religion, she probably don't know it. So if I say, say, bro, you don't know that book, and you don't know that book, don't get in your feelings because you're teaching false religion, and you're teaching people that something false that's not going to happen according to the book. If we're supposed to be coming from the book, it's supposed to come out the book, well, why we can't stick with the book? So if you're not sticking with the book, you're giving me what? False religion according to the 17th chapter of what? Revelation. Why? Because in the 16th chapter, he going to destroy all of those different armies. The 17th chapter deals with false religion. The 18th chapter deals with the economy. All Bible. It's all Bible. It's all Bible. But if you don't know the 16th chapter, the 17th chapter, the 18th chapter, how you going to get it? But you got to go all the way back in the book of Genesis. You got to deal with who? Noah. If you deal with Noah, you got to bag it up. You got to deal with what? Happened to get to know where he was at. If you deal with Noah, you got to deal with Nimrod. If you don't know who Nimrod is, how you going to deal with the ending of time? Because that's where it started, with Nimrod. How? Because Nimrod was the one to start what? The great city of Nineveh. Now, to really understand Nineveh, you got to go in Nahum. You go in Nahum, Nahum going to break down Nineveh. But if you go in Jonah, Jonah was sent to go into Nineveh. Man, say, bro. 
Keep sitting in church learning Mary had a little lamb. And you watch where you wind up at. Watch where you wind up at. Because if this Bible, that 17th chapter, breaks down all false religion, stay focused. Antichrist and false prophet. Antichrist and false prophet. The false prophet is not the Antichrist. The Antichrist is the Antichrist, but the Antichrist gets his influence from who? The false prophet. Why? Because he, he needs to be able to put the false religion in place. Come here, Bible. We're going to go slow so you can get it. I'm going to read to you the 17th chapter of Revelation. I'm going to go in the 16th chapter. This is where God destroys armies, the great armies. Boom. 17th chapter is when God destroys false religion. 18th chapter is where God destroys the economy. Right? Okay. So now, Babylon is a system. He's going to destroy the Babylon economy, Babylon politics, Babylon religion. But, watch this. Jesus cannot have his second coming until all of this judgment has taken place place. This is what I tell y'all. Resurrection, with, with, rapture, and his second coming, three different things. Three different things. You have the resurrection, you have the rapture, and you have his second coming. The second coming of Christ is not the rapture, okay? The resurrection is going to take place Right before the millennium, the unbelievers gonna make the unbelievers. They gonna get judged after the thousand years. Believers gonna make it into the millennium. But before this happens, all this judgment has to take place. But 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 as I say, if you've been learning from a false religion about a hereafter, it's a lie. You know why? Because guess what? It's coming from a false religion. All that you're going to have this, this going to happen, selfish. Say, bro, if you don't know where it's coming from, you're in trouble. And as we get further and further to the ending of the second returning of Christ, it's going to get worse, people. And it's going to get worse. That's part of the judgment. False religion. This is why I say, bro, so what you a pastor? So what you a prophet? So what? So what? Why? Because a lot of y'all still teaching false religion. And you don't even know it. Because you don't know the book. Watch this. Run it. Where we going, dog? Where you want to go first? You want to go to, you want to, go to Jonah? You want to go to Nahum? You want to go to Peter? You want to go to Revelation? Where you want to go? Read Revelation first? All right. Bring it close. Watch this. So while you sitting under these people with all this jibby jibby jab, how you know if it's not false religion? Time to teach, baby. Time for the teacher to teach. Teach, teacher. <laughs> teach, teacher. Watch this. Revelation. The 17th chapter, and it reads, And there came one of the seven angels which had seven vows. That's come from the 16th chapter, the seven bold judgments. And talk with me, saying, Come higher, and I will show unto the judgment of the great whore that sit upon many waters. Waters represents people. The water represents people. The great whore represents the one that has the influence over the people. False religion verse 2 with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have done have made drunk with the wine of her who the great whore fornication watch this verse 3 so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit up on a scarlet beast full of names blaspheme having seven heads ten horns Verse 4, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked in gold and precious, precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. 
the steals with false religion. Watch this. Come here, Babylon. Come, come, come in, Nimrod. Come in, Nimrod. I'm coming back, Peter. Come in, Nimrod. Come here, come, come here. Come here, um, no, no, no. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop in the 12th chapter. Come here, um, Abraham. Don't never lose sight of the Jews. I'm gonna run it in a second. But I'm gonna read it to show you. Never lose sight. In the 12th chapter of Genesis, this is God talking to Abraham. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get out, get thee out thy country from among thy kids, rest, from among thy father in the land, and I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Okay, now, what Bible did Abraham have? What Bible did Abraham have? None. He had the word of God. But before we get to Abraham, if we back up in the 11th chapter, who do we have? Boom. The Tower of Babel. How do we get to the Tower of Babel? We got to back up into the 10th chapter. We go in the 10th chapter. In the 10th chapter, watch this. I'm going to start right here at the 6th verse. Genesis 10 and 6 says, And the sons of Ham. Who? Ham. Where Ham came from? Noah. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Put, and Canaan, the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havela, and Sabbath, and Ramah, and Sabbatia, and the son of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan, and Cush begot Nimrod. Pastor Mike, who is Nimrod? How you think we get to the 17th chapter of Revelation? This is where it started. This is where it started. Watch this. And he began, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. Who? Nimrod. And he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Not a hunter of animals, but a hunter of people. This is why Jesus told Peter, I will make you to be a fisherman of men. Watch this. Verse 10. And he began, and he be, in the beginning of his kingdom, who? Nimrod, was Babel. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Who? Nimrod. And he wretch, in the cot, in covenant, in the land of Shinar. Out of the land went Fort Asher to build Nineveh. In the city Rebat and Kela, and Resan between Nineveh and Kela was the same was the same as the great city. Which one? Nineveh. Come in now. Come in now. Come in now. In the third chapter of Nahum, watch this. I'm going to start at the fourth verse. Because of the multitude of whoredom. What whoredom, Mike? The great whore of Babylon that started with Nimrod. When he got all the people together to build the Tower of Babel, that was the beginning of a one-man, one-world order. It started with Nimrod. Watch this. Come back here. I ain't going to lose you. Watch this. Nahum, N-A-H-U-M, a minor prophet like Joel and and, 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 and Habakkuk, a minor prophet. Nahum 3 and 4 says, because of the multitude of whoredom, because of the multitude of whoredom, of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcraft, that sell it nations, that sell it nations through her whoredom and families through her witchcraft. Behold, I'm against thee, says the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy, and thy kingdoms thy shame. But in order to understand what's going on in Nineveh, was understand what's going on with, with, with Abram, and understand what's going on with Nimrod, and in order to understand what's going on with Noah, you got to go back to the sixth chapter. When you go back to the sixth chapter, you deal with two people. Godly and ungodly. Godly and ungodly. How do we get godly and ungodly? We got to go back into the fourth chapter. We go back into the fourth chapter. Who do we have? Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Cain, godly. I mean, Cainly, ungodly. Abel, godly. But then Cain kills Abel. So God's giving him another son. Going to be set. Why they running around here telling you about Cain was jealous of Abe and all that? They can't show you that nowhere in this book. Nowhere. Okay? 
Let's stay focused on the real thing. And the real thing is the judgment of God. And where did the judgment of God come from? Because of what Adam did. And because of what Adam did, Cain killed Abel. Why? Because God told Cain, say, bro, if you don't get your mind right, sin waiting for you at the door. And because he didn't get his mind right, sin was waiting at the, for him at the door, and he killed Abel. But then God gave Adam another son, which is Seth. So now here comes Seth. Seth is the godly line of God. Cain is the ungodly. So now the ungodly line of Cain is marrying the godly line of Seth. So God said, what the world going on here? What the world? Y'all not supposed to be getting with these people. Ungodly supposed to stay ungodly and godly supposed to stay godly. But y'all done got together. So what did God do this time? God destroyed the whole world. He destroyed the whole world. He started all over. With the three sons of who? Noah. Now we get who? Nimrod. Nimrod did what in the 11th chapter? Nimrod wanted to build the Tower of Babel. Nimrod said, say, bro, who this dude called God I be hearing about? Y'all know that dude? Tell you what, bro. Y'all with me? How about if we build a tower and we go up there and check that dude? One man convinced all those people to do that. One man. One man convinced all those people to do that. Stuff been going on, people in the book. But we too busy with this foolishness running around church clapping and flipping over and jumping over. What do you really know about the judgment of God? Man, God gonna wreck this place, people. And he gonna wreck a lot of us. And a lot of us been sitting up under some false religion. And didn't even know it. Just like Creflo coming out now and saying, yeah, well, we didn't know how to tell y'all, so we just was teaching y'all false religion. But I, I, I sold my seed, false religion. I gave my 10% false religion. So you mean it? That foolishness we doing in the church? Lord, have mercy. Help us when we get to the 17th chapter of Revelation. Don't have a clue, people. But you get mad with me. I'm doing what God told me to do. I tell you what God tells me to tell you. But you get in your feelings. Really? Really? I don't beg you for no money to do this. I could be doing a million other things. A million other things than coming here every morning and teaching you this book. Oh, you're going to learn it today. Watch this. Where we going, God? Where we going? Where we going? Where we going? Where we going? That's where you won't go? That's where you won't go? Right here, Michael? Okay. You turn it, baby. I don't know. You go wherever you go. Michael, watch this. Michael. M-I-C-A-H. M-I-C-A-H. Michael. Like Joel and, and Nahum. People y'all don't even know that's even in the Bible because they're not going to preach to y'all about these people. Watch this. Michael, according to the fourth chapter, says... But in the last days it should come to pass that the mountains of the house of the Lord should be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow unto it. Verse 2. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountains of the Lord and the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord of Jer from Jerusalem. Verse 3. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into the plows and their spears into the pern hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nations. Neither shall they learn war in the more. 17th chapter, 16th chapter, 18th chapter, 19th chapter will take us into the 20th chapter of Revelation. So don't get in your feelings when I say they don't know this book. Because when I say that, you know what I'm really telling you? Boy, y'all been sitting up under a lot of false religion. According to this book, we're going to walk this book. Why? Because if I go, if I go to, if I go to first, come here, Peter. Come here, Peter. Come here, Peter. Come here, Peter. If I go in Peter, come here, Peter. I just need you for one second, Peter.
If I go in Peter, right? And if I start at the 11th verse, 1 Peter 5 and 11 says, To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By surveying as a faithful brother unto us, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein you stand. Not no false religion, but the true grace of God. Watch this. Verse 13. The church that is at Babylon. What you said, Peter? The church that is at Babylon elected together with you, salute you, and do Marcus, my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss, with charity, peace be unto you, all that are in Christ, all that are in Christ, all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Peter, how we get a church in Babylon? P Peter, you was talking about an actual church in that city, or was you talking about a system? Because if I go in Revelation, we're going to look at it as a system, or we're going to actually look at it as a city. Because if I go in Jonah, Jonah had to go to Nineveh. Nineveh was actually a city. But if I go in, Nin in, 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 in Nahum, Nahum telling me how God had to judge the great city of Nineveh. But if I go back in the 10th chapter of Genesis, now I look at a man by the name of Nimrod. Who started Nimrod? Who started the great city of Nineveh? Nimrod. But if I go to Jonah, how Jonah had to go to Nineveh, I got to understand the book of Acts. Why? Because just like Jonah had to go to Nineveh, the apostles had to go into the world. Why? Because God was going to destroy Nineveh had they not repented. That's why Jonah didn't want to go. Because God knew that Jonah was God knew Jonah knew that God wouldn't judge him. But yet they changed their mind. That's only why God didn't judge him, other than that God was gonna knock fire from Nineveh. So now we get into the New Testament. God is sending Peter, James, and John into the world. Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and the other parts of the world. Why? To do the same thing that I sent Jonah to do. To tell these people about who? God. But we so caught up in all this false religion. So a seed. Pay 10%. Run around the church. Hold your breath. High five pee people. Really people? False religion and if i'm lying come show me you got 66 books you got 66 books if i'm lying come show me get mad with me when i say they don't know the book the reason why i tell you they don't know the book because they're hitting you with false religion but i said about the mic what's up with for second corinthians 11 and 12. I should have said, bro, all you got to do is go back to the ninth chapter of, 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 of Acts. If you go in the ninth chapter of Acts, it's going to give you 2 Corinthians 11 and 12. I'm coming back, Revelation. We're going to work this book. We're just going to work the book. We're going to work the book. If you ask me a question, I got to answer. I got to answer. I got to answer. I got to answer. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Come here. Come, come here. Come here, Corinth. Where you at, babe? I know you're in here somewhere. Watch this. Watch this. The 11th chapter, right? You want to start the 12th chapter? Where you want to go? What do you, you want to give to him? Let's hit him with the 11th. Let's hit him with 12 first. Right? Watch this. The 12th chapter, 2 Corinthians says, It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to vision and revelation of the Lord. I will come to a vision and revelation of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ. I knew a man in Christ. This is why Sunday when I preached the message, interested, interview, intelligence. It all deals with the word I in, in. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or out of the body, I cannot tell. God know it. So all that old line, but I heard God say this and that, say, bro, Paul said whether I was in the body or not, I don't know. I don't know. God knew though. Watch this. Watch this. Such one caught up in the third heaven. What God? What you saying, God? In the third heaven? Well, how many heavens you got up there? Psst. 
For Paul said, such one caught up in the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knew it. So why are you waiting to go to heaven? Which heaven are you getting to? The first one, the second one, or the third one? Say, bro, I told y'all, a little faking in these churches, that's over with. So when we really get in this book, don't mess us up. You know why? They ain't been teaching us in the church. They've been teaching us about Humpty Dumpty sitting on the wall. That's King Saul. Mary had a little lamb. Yeah, Mary did have a lamb because she had Jesus, the lamb of God, would take away the sins of the world. So we know that. But break it down to us. What about this third heaven? What's really going on? Watch this. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Wait, God. Wait, 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 God. So why are we just running around here saying anything in the church if we are not to utter certain things that we have in the vision and the revelation? Back to the message Sunday. Everybody cannot interview your intelligence. Intelligence, intelligence is, the knowledge, is the knowledge that you have acquired. And now that you have acquired it, you can apply it. But people will be interested to where they want to interview your intelligence. But everybody can't interview your intelligence. Intelligence. Pastor Mike, how you know all that? That ain't your business. Why? Because everything cannot be uttered. Teach it. Teach it. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such one will I glory. Yet I myself not glory, but in my infirmities. What I look like bragging about what God did for me. The materialistic things. This thing is about salvation. This thing is about personal relationship. This thing is about eternal life. All that other noise, man, miss me. Miss us. Watch this. You back it up in the 11th chapter. Because we know Paul will later go on and say, when I'm weak, He's strong. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Why? Because Paul said 14 years ago. What was happening 14 years ago, Paul? What was happening 14 years ago? The road of Damascus. Back to the 19th, not, back to the ninth chapter of Acts. Watch this. Watch this. You didn't read where he said in the ninth chapter, his eyes was open. Eight verse, ninth verse, they had to lead him by the hand. Say, bro. Come on, we're going to break this book down. Come back here. Come back here. Let me show you something. 11 chapter, 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. We're going to start at the 29th verse. Who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is offended? And I will burn not. You can get offended. I'm not about to burn. I ain't made you to stumble. You're making yourself to stumble. Why? Because you don't want to accept the truth. You're too busy trying to judge down here on earth when God going to knock fire from all of us. Watch this. Verse 30, if I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities, my weakness, my weakness. Verse 31, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, know that I lie not. That's why I say, I'm lying. <laughs> Come show me. You can. Watch this. Come here. Let me show you something else. Verse 32, in Damascus, the governor under Artus, the king kept the city of Damascus with a garrison desirous to apprehend me. What you said, Paul? Man, when I was in Damascus, the governor, they wanted to get me. They wanted to kill me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Where you did this at, Paul? You writing this to Corinthians in the 11th chapter. Where you did this at, Paul? Come in 9th chapter of Acts. Come in 9th chapter of Acts. 
Acts the 9th chapter, the 23rd verse says, And after the many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill who? Paul. But their laying awake was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. It's not that what you're telling us in Corinth. It's not that what you said in Corinth. And through a window in a basket, I was led by down by the wall and escaped his hand. When Paul was writing his letters, Paul was always reminded of what? His repentance and his conversion. He was always sharing what God had did for him when he was converted. Nowhere in Paul's writings where Paul said so a seed. Nowhere in Paul's writings when Paul said pay 10%. Nowhere in Paul's writings where he taught about circleism, materialism, or uh, uh, none of that foolishness, humanism, none of it. But when I go to the 17th chapter of Revelation, when I go to the 17th chapter of Revelation, a book they don't know, a book they don't teach, a book they don't break down, it deals with false religion. Watch this. Watch this. Revelation 17 and 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows. Chapter 16. The seven bold judgments. And talk with me, saying unto me, Come hider. And I will show you the judgment of the great whore. Watch this. That sit upon many waters. The judgment of the great whore that sits on many waters. Come at 13. Come at 13. Revelation 13 and 1 says, And I stood up on the sands of the sea and saw a beast rise up. Out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Why? This is the Antichrist. This is the Antichrist. The sea represents what? The people. A body of people. That's how many people are going to. That's how many people have been caught up in false religion. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sit upon many waters. Waters represents the body of the people. I'm going to share a quick story with you right quick. Watch this. Back in, I got to Walker in 79. I got expelled out of Walker in 80 fall of 80. So I had to finish my year at, 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 at Walker. I wound up at Graps. So I had to do 80, the, in, the 80, the fall of 80, going into the early 81 at Graps. I made it to Clark in 81, right? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this story. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. Now, I know I had to be, I probably was like, about, maybe about 15, 15, 16, somewhere in there. Okay. One holiday, I went to the store, right? My aunt took me to the plaza. We went to the plaza. Mom gave me some money, went to the plaza, right? I wanted my outfit for, for I think it was Thanksgiving. Watch this, people. Pay very close attention to this. Watch this. So we get to the plaza, right? Now remember, first through eighth grade, I went to private school, AB student. Get in the ninth grade, I'm cutting class. I'm just cutting the food. Why? I didn't understand the transition from private school to public school. Public school was too free for me. Public school, well, what I learned in public school in the seventh and eighth grade, they were teaching in the ninth grade. So I was ahead of the class. I just jacked that off, right? My whole ninth grade, yeah, I jacked that off at Walk. Get expelled in the tenth grade. But now watch this. So I'm like, I'm at Clark now. 
So anyway, I'm at the plaza. We're in the plaza, right? Mom gave me some money. Now remember, I attended Graps. But before I went to Graps, I went to private school. But I learned some things while I was at Graps. So we're in the mall. I go in the store, right? I try on some jeans. Remember, I went to Graps. So when I tried the jeans on, I liked how the jeans fit. So I took my other jeans and put them on on top of the jeans that I had on, right? So now I'm going to pay for the shirt. But I done stole the jeans. Walked right out the store with the jeans on. I put them jeans under my other jeans, right? Oh, I'm going to be ready. Was that cockiness or was that confidence? No, that was confidence. Had nothing to do with being cocky. I done stole them jeans. Watch this. So now, okay, got enough. Got my shirt, got my jeans. Went to Floorsman. Bought me some slippers. That's what we wore back then, them, them, them Evan slippers. I want my, so I'm going to be clean, right? I'm good. I'm straight. I'm straight. Watch this. On the way home, my grandmother lived in Gentilly. On the way home, my aunt wanted to stop at Swagman's, right? So now, I stop in Swagman's. Get in Swagman's, I wanted me a monogram handkerchief. Got money because I done stole the jeans, right? Got stolen jeans on, right? So now, I steal the handkerchiefs, right? But I get busted in Swagman's for stealing the handkerchiefs. But well, you know, back then, that was, that was your path to Mike. I, I wanted to be gangster. Put the handkerchief around my neck, that, that foolishness, right? Okay, now, I get in the office. While I'm in the office, the two guys who bust me stealing in Swagman, now here come the supervisor. Supervisor sit at the desk. Watch this, people. In my pocket, I had my report card. In my pocket. I'm at clock now. I'm making up for what I did in the ninth grade, messing up at walk. So the supervisor looking at my report card. So the guy said, um, you ready? We could call the police now? The supervisor said, no, we're not going to call the police. He said, why? He said, man, look at this dude's report card. This dude got a B in geometry, a, a, a B in algebra. Look at, look at his report card. He said, man, I couldn't even make them kind of grades. The guy said, man. As small as you are, why are you stealing? Went to grabs, picked up a bad behavior, right? Watch this, people. So the man said, well, okay, you got on stolen jeans that you done stole from somewhere. We don't know where you stole them from. And now you're in here stealing. The man said, say, man, because of your report card, we're going to let you go. But you can't take the handkerchief. Now you can buy them if you want, because you got money. Don't never say what your child wouldn't do. You'll never know where your child picked your behaviors up from. That man said, because of your grades, we're not going to call the police. Who did he come in the store with? With this lady. So now I got to go with my aunt. So now I'm looking at, wow. You mean to tell me a smart person could get away with stuff in life? Because I'm smart. That's the only reason why y'all letting me go. Because if I didn't have my report card, you'd treat me like any other kid in this world. But because you didn't see my report card, and you see that I'm smart, now you're going to let me go. Say, bro, that don't impress me. That don't impress me because you could say this and that. That don't impress me because you could talk like this and that. I can do the same thing. But what about all the mother people? What about all the mother people who can't read, who don't understand that as well, who can't comprehend? We don't have so much false religion in the church. We've been faking so much in the church. What about really going on in this book? But you know what they gonna say? He cocky. No, that's confidence. I had enough confidence that once I put my jeans on, on top of the jeans I had, I'm gonna walk out the stove. I, what, 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 I think the, the women wore the chick jeans back then, and they were jaw dashes and Sergio's. I, I thought there was some jaw dash jeans I had. Them jeans were like $75. I'm talking like this, this got to be like 81, 82. People, stop being so fake on some real talk. A lot of us done did stuff in our lives. A lot of us done did stuff we done got away with. But we run in these churches like we all that. You're not all that. You're not all that. Why? 
Paul was always reminding. Paul was always reminding. Paul was always letting them know, say, man, this is what I did, and this is what God brought me through. This is what I did, and this is what God brought me through. And this is how people was coming in. This is how people was being saved. This is how people, not that foolishness we doing in the church, all that old begging and pimping and all that old foolishness. 10%? Man, that's false religion. Sowing the seed? That's false religion. You can't show it to me nowhere in this book. So if they're teaching you all that other false religion, how much more of it is false and you believe in it? How much more of it is false and you believe in it? But he told us about salvation, but it's coming from a false religion. But he told us about hereafter, but it's coming from a false religion. Nimrod. I'm coming back, Revelation. Come back, Revelation. Help it make sense to some people. Everybody don't need it to make their, okay. It ain't about being cocky. It's about confidence. Everybody cannot interview your intelligence. Whatever knowledge you have acquired and you are applying it, that's between you and God. Why? Because Paul said the vision and the revelation, some things is not for other people to know. Genesis the 11th chapter says, starting at verse 1, and the whole earth, what God? And the whole earth, what God? And the whole earth was one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly, and that have brick for stone and slime had they made mortar. And they said, Go to, <clears throat> excuse me, let us build us a city <clears throat> and a tower, who top may reach unto heaven. Let us build. Not God. Let us build. That foolishness we doing in the church, that's not of God. That's of us. Let us build. A city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men, not of God, not of God, but the children of men built. <clears throat> Jesus, kingdom cannot come. Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come. Jesus' kingdom cannot come into this system, this Babylon system, this one man order has been judged. Politics, religion, and economy. Until that has been judged, Jesus cannot return. And it's going to get judged according to the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th chapter of Revelation. The 17th chapter of Revelation deals with false religion. The 18th chapter deals with the economy. The 16th chapter deals with politics. From lying, come show me. For Paul said, I lie not. But who's breaking this book down? Who's teaching us that? They're too busy begging. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. And the Lord said, Behold, people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. God said, I'm you. <laughs> God said, but they fools. God said, what they fools? What, what, man, what? Verse Seven. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the law scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left, and they left off to build the city. Therefore, 
is the name of it called Babel? Babylon. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from this did the Lord scatter them abroad upon all the face of the earth. And here you go. Now we about to break it down into generations. And the same mentality, the same mentality that Nimrod had, his one world order, God is going to give man that. Bag it up. The same reason why God destroyed the earth for Noah, godly and ungodly, he destroyed them together. But this time, this time, he going to remove the godly and then he going to deal with the ungodly. This whole book, this whole book, See, all we got to do is go back in the garden. This whole book, all we got to do is read from chapter 1 all the way up to 12. But then God get in the 12th chapter. God says, say, Abraham, come here, babe. I got to work for you. Look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to make your father of many nations. And whoever bless you, I'm going to bless them, right? I got you. Watch this, Abraham. But you are going to be the one to let the world know about my people. You got that, Abraham? Got that. Don't lose sight. Don't lose sight. Because then we run and we deal with who? Ishmael and Isaac. Those were Abraham's first children. But guess what? We're going to tell you Ishmael is the Arabs. Don't lose focus of Nimrod. Nimrod was an Arab. The Tower of Babylon, I, 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 what, what is the, Tower, the Tower of Babylon, they say pieces of it is still over there. In Arabia somewhere. It's still over there to this day. To this day. But it started with Nimrod. It started with a government ran by one man. Against who? God. Politics. Religion. Economy. And it's been going on all through time. That's why everybody else had a king. But Israel, but Israel felt that they should have a king. But Israel had the kings of kings. God said, okay, y'all want a king? This is what it's going to do to you. It's going to rule your women. It's going to rule your children. And you're going to have to, they're going to own everything. What you going to own? Nothing. That same system from way back when is still in the world today. And God going to judge it according to the 16th, 17th, and 18th chapter of Revelation. So why we don't know this in the church? Why? Why nobody never taught us that? God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. For you do not to know what's happening for you to not to know what's to come, that's God forsaking you. But he said he would never leave you nor forsake you. But we so busy drawing to man. We so busy getting closer to man instead of God. But we ain't getting into the yet. We're going we gonna to destroy this 17th chapter. Just because people are interested, everybody can't interview. Why? Because they don't have your intelligence. You know what they're going to call your intelligence? They're going to call your intelligence cocky. They're going to call your intelligence arrogant. They're going to call your intelligence negative. They're going to call your intelligence bad energy. They're going to call your intelligence all the things they don't know what to say. Because they don't know God. And nobody been teaching us about God. But God said he's going to teach you. Now you're going to know. How in the world are you going to know this book with one verse? Because as you study the letters Paul wrote, you're going to always go back to that ninth chapter. As you see. As you study the, 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 the letters Paul wrote, he's going to always give you the experience that he had. He's going to tell you about all the things he did. And then he's going to reveal to you the mysteries that was hidden the mysteries that was hidden in Christ. So you don't get mad with me? Say, bro, you get mad with me because you don't know the book. Peter and John didn't know some stuff. God didn't give Peter the revelation. He gave it to John. 
Paul didn't have the revelation that John had, but Paul had the mysteries of the church. Peter didn't have the revelation of the mysteries, but Peter had the heart to jump out there and start it. Everybody got a part to play, big. Know your role. A lot of people don't even know their role. They're just out here doing stuff. Man, God gonna smash us with that foolishness. Far too many of us are caught up in false religion. Oh, we're gonna work that 17th chapter. Don't cry now. Well, then again, I'd rather cry now than me hanging out with Baba, crying later. We good, go up there? Where you wanna go? Where, where, where you wanna go? Huh? What's this? Oh, be, I don't know where we be going. Maybe be having the book already turned. All right. Let's see what you got here, babe. I'm going to read it. Luke, the 13th chapter, in the 31st verse says, The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out, and depart hence, for he ride will kill thee. Hold up, God. The enemy we want all to kill your people, huh? They wanted to kill Paul. They wanted to kill Peter. They wanted to kill. Maybe all we want to kill your people. But they behave. <laughs> this is why I tell you when we get into the 11th chapter of Revelation, you got to know the difference in the temple. The temple of Herod, the temple of Zerubbabel, the temple of Solomon, the temple of the Great Tribulation, and the temple of God. What temple is being referred to? But if you don't know the temples, you don't know the people, you... It's going to add up. It's going to add up. Just, just stay right there. It's going to add up. It's going to add up. Watch, watch, watch this. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, who are you talking to Jesus? I'm talking to he ride. Oh, Jesus, you a gangster. You talk like that? Yeah, I talk like that. Jesus said, And go ye and tell that fox, Behold, cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfect. Jesus God do the fox. <laughs> God, they get mad with me when I say they're a duck. Jesus God do the old fox. He ain't calling him by his name. Jesus said, Go tell that fox. Go tell that fox what I see. I ain't finished. Watch this. Verse 33. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following. If I cannot be that prophet, perish out of Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which kills the prophet and stones them that are sent unto thee. I'm telling you what God said. Let me turn the book. I ain't just, just turn the book. But you won't kill me. You won't be mad with me. You won't. No. Them jokers don't know this book. Them jokers been teaching y'all a bunch of false religion. And God has shown up just like Jesus showed up. And now they're mad with Jesus. So they're mad with Pastor Mike. I don't care. <laughs> they ain't going to stop me. <laughs> they ain't going to stop me until God says it's time to stop. The truth is the truth. And if you don't like it, okay. And you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Watch this. Come on back here. Come on. Stone them that are sent unto thee. How often, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a Hindu gather her broad under her wings, and you would not. Verse 35. Behold, behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, you shall not see me. Until the time come when you shall say, Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Back to the 20th chapter of Revelation. Why? Because we done did 16, we done did 17, we done did 18, 19, he gonna show up. And 20, he just gonna fall back. That's Bible, baby. But he can't do this until he said dissolute. What is dissolute? Back to the 13th chapter of Revelation. Back to the ninth chapter of, 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 of um, Daniel. The abomination of desolation. Which takes place, which tells us about in the 24th chapter of Matthew. Say, bro. People, we in a world of trouble. According to this book, according to God, we in a world of trouble.
Because if he can come clean and say we have been new, but we didn't know how to tell y'all, if he can come clean, just imagine when all the rest of them start coming clean. According to this book, I ain't been to the Bible college. I ain't been to seminary. I ain't been to theology. How in the world I know it? How in the world I know it? And they don't. How in the world I can stand here and say they lying? And they can't, they can't even take up for themselves and say I'm lying. Boy, we in trouble. We in trouble. Help us, Lord, please. I'm helping y'all, Mike. That's why you stand out there every day. That's why you standing out there every day. Because nobody could have an excuse. Just like a hen gather, I'm gathering, Mike. I'm gathering all those who are going to believe in me. Because the book of Revelation deals with ungodliness. And people are going to become more ungodly than anything. People are going to fall more away from God than to God. Why? Because of false religion. Because of false religion. Turn your book there. Luke, boom, 37, 11 and 37 says, And he spake of certain Pharisees besought him to dine with him, and he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisees saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. And the Lord said unto him, Now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup? <laughs> Chief because the joker got a collar on. Chief because the joker got a robe on. Chief because the joker walking down and with, with swinging in the Y'all go behind that foolishness. Y'all go behind that foolishness. I don't know, somebody to put up the Luke 12 and 13. Yeah, man, Luke 12, let me read this. We're going to read that too. We read the whole book. We ain't scared. We ain't scared what Bible study about. One thing about Father the Man, when I do Bible study, it's open flow Bible study. You want to ask a question? Ask a question. You ain't about to come sit in there for no hour and let me dictate you what this Bible says and then we go home. No. You got a question, you ask me. You don't understand something, you ask me. You ask, Father the Man, wait, 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 wait. Stop right there. Back it up. What did you mean when you say that? And I will explain it. Well, Father the Man, well, what about what's going on? Well, I will explain it. I will explain it. You sitting there, you sitting there all that time and don't have a clue, and then you go out the door. Well, what did no ask, 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 ask. Now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward parts are full of raving and wickedness. But your inward, I don't turn it there, he turn it there. I don't turn it there, he turn it there. False religion. You fools. Hey God, you gonna call the people fool? You fools. Is in rage. Is in rage. Okay? That's Jesus talking. That's Jesus talking. That's Jesus talking. Verse 40, 11 and, 11 and 40 says, You fools, did not he that had, did you fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also within? Interested, interview, intelligence. Within. But rather give alms to such things as you have. And behold, all things are clean unto you. Who go to them? Why? Because <laughs> they gave it to them. Back to Nimrod. They built that. God didn't build it. They built that. 
All that, all that denominational stuff, man built that. Go on and build that. Catholic, Baptist, Protestant, whole gospel, Presbyterian. Go on and build that. God did not build that. Man built that. But woe unto you Pharisees, for you tied men in rule in all manner of herbs and pass over judgment. <laughs> and the love of God. <laughs> and the love of God. If you sow a seed of $50 today, God will give you 5000 next week. And you fall for that foolishness. That don't have nothing to do with judgment or the love of God. And God will give you $5,000 if you just ask him for it. God will give it to you if you just ask him. God, I need $5,000. You got me, babe? I got you, Mike. See how they been playing you? False religion. I ain't finished. Come on. I don't turn in here. Jesus, go, but the Bible just wherever it go, we're going to run it. It all line up. Pass over judgment and the love of God. These all you have done and not leave out the other undone. Woe unto you Pharisees. Woe unto you Pharisees. For you love the uppermost seat in the synagogue and the greetings in the market. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you are as graves which are appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. False religion. What you saying, Jesus? Mike, they walking over the grave. They don't even know that's made for them. Why? They finally mind them. Ah, they finally mind them. And if you read it again, you woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you are graves. Which appear not. People can't see the grave, Mike. They can't see it. And the men that walk over them, which are, are not aware of them. Oh my God. Oh my God. But they got a collar on. God, they got the black clothes on with the cop, Mike. False religion. But they got the robe and stuff on, God, and they be saying hallelujah and shandada, you know. Mike, false religion. What that have to do with judgment? What does that have to do with the love of God? But they're going to collect alms. They're going to collect tithes. <laughs> Ain't my fault. <laughs> Ain't my fault. I, don't, I ain't write the book. I just say, I just read it. Me, I just read it and tie it all in the whole book, all 66 books. We're going to bag it up. Let's bag it up to 11. We ain't going to just do no one verse. We ain't going to just do no 12 and 13. Let's bag this thing up. And when they bring, we're going to do 12 and 11. And you know, let's bag it up to 10. We're going to do 12 and 10. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto that, that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. The whore. Back to the 17th chapter, blaspheme. Back to the 13th chapter of Revelation, blaspheme, blaspheme, blaspheme. You cannot be forgiven. Blaspheme is not receiving the Holy Spirit. Blaspheme is going against the Holy Ghost. For the Bible said they bad Jesus in the mouth. Boom. Jesus said, I said what I said. I ain't about to change it. But even though Jesus got bad in the mouth, Jesus could forgive him. But if you don't, but if you go against that Holy Spirit, if you don't accept that Holy Spirit, you already doomed. Boom. Watch this. Come on, I ain't finished. Let's read all this. We're going to do the one verse. Let's read all this. Verse 11. And when they bring you unto the synagogues, into the magistrates and powers, take you no thought how or what things you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. That's why I write no message now. I look like standing in front of y'all reading off a piece of paper. God called me to do this. Say, God, bro, if you call me to do this, you give it to me with the say. So I just get on a Sunday morning, I run it. Come out here every day at 9 o'clock, I run it. Ain't no, there is nowhere in the world that no one individual could stand here every day and run this Bible without having all this stuff to read off. And up. No, 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 no. From my heart to your heart. He give it to me to say, I run it. He give it to me to say, I run it. Well, I look like writing something now. Nah, I ain't got time to be writing nothing. I told God that. 
I say, God, I'm not about to be writing nothing now. God said, okay, you're going to know that book. And every time you open up your mouth, the Bible said the Holy Spirit will bring all things back to your remembrance. So every time I open my mouth, here come the remembrance of the word of God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Bad. Oh, you're bad to the bone. Watch this. Verse 13. Let me get a little water. Let me take a little water. Baby, I'm running. I'm running. Got to get a little sweet. Watch this. Verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made you a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life is consistent not in the abundance of things which he possess. Oh my God. Oh my God, I don't know, somebody put it on the thing. I, my glass is good enough to read. <laughs> my glass was good enough to read. <laughs> but how you gonna understand verse 13 without understanding verse 10, 11, and 12 when I'm dealing with the Holy Ghost, which drops me all the way down to verse 15. Why? It's not about the things I possess, it's about what's in, back to inherit, back to interest, back to interview, back to intelligence, in. The Holy Ghost is in me, is in me. So when you run out there with that book, People know the book. Know what is being said, why it's being said, and where it comes from. For greater is he that's in intelligence. For greater is he that is in interview. For greater is he that is in interested. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. For when they ran up on Jesus, Jesus taught them to walk in authority. For they asked Jesus, by what authority you do this? Jesus said, okay, I will tell you by what authority that I do this if you tell me about what baptism did John the Baptist come did it, was it of God or was it of man? And they couldn't answer Jesus after he interviewed them when they were trying to interview him. So Jesus said, neither will I tell y'all about what authority I walk in. Boom. Ha! <laughs> Bye. Wait, 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 let me show it to him. Come here, come here, Luke. Since we in Luke. I know you in here. Come here, Luke. Don't run from me, babe. No, now I don't need you. I need Mark. Come here, Mark. Come here, Mark. I'll be back, Luke. Luke, you did good. Whoever put that verse up, appreciate you. Thank you. Come here. Watch this. Watch this. According to Luke, according to Mark, Mark the 11th chapter 27 verse says, And they come again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, who? Jesus. And there come to him, who? The chief priests, and the scribes, and the elders. And they say unto him, who? Jesus. By what authority, by what authority, by what authority does thou these things? And who gave this authority to do these things? This is what they asking Jesus. This is what they asking my dude. Look how my dude was a cold gas. Look how he answered. <laughs> Look how he answered them people. And Jesus said, and Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you a one question, and you answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. I'm gonna answer you if you answer me first. See, that was the game back then in the streets. If I ran up on you and asked you a question, you would turn around and ask me a question. Then that would answer your question that as you asked me. That was the game back then in the days. In Jesus' time, Jesus knew how they ran game. This is why I always tell y'all, I put you on top of game. Watch this. Verse 30. This is Jesus talking. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of man? Jesus said, answer me. <laughs> Jesus answered me. <laughs> Y'all ask me a question about what authority I do this. And what God, okay, well tell me this. John the Baptist baptism, was it of man or was it of God? Now y'all answer me. It's who jumped out first. What takes me back to where we went to yesterday in the 18th chapter of Proverbs. But I'm coming back, I, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Gotta be able to run the book, baby. Tie the book in. If you say this, say that. If you say that, say this. It all go together. Watch this. Proverbs 18 and 17 says, He that is first in his own cause seem just. He that is first in his own cause seem just. He that put it out there first, think he right. He that put it out there first, think he got it together. But continue to read. For the rest of the verse says, But his neighbor come and examine him. His neighbor come and search at him. So when they ran out there on my dude Jesus, Jesus said, okay, 
Y'all tell me. When y'all tell me what y'all asking, and then I'ma answer y'all, but y'all answer me first. Since y'all think y'all got all the sense. Boom, I ain't finished. Come back in, Mo. We gotta see what they said, Mo. We gotta see what they said. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or was it our men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say, why did we not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people for all the men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, we cannot tell. And Jesus answered and said to them, neither do I tell you what authority I do these things. Boom. <laughs> Jesus said, neither I tell y'all why I do what I do. Everybody cannot interview your intelligence. Though they may be interested, are they interested for good or are they interested for your bad? Jesus understood that they were interested for his bad trying to interview his intelligence but yet Jesus jumped out there on them and was ahead of the game and asked them a question and they couldn't answer his question so since they couldn't answer his question Jesus said neither will I answer y'all boom Bible baby dude was a cold gangster but we're not going to teach y'all the Bible like this we not that, that, that. I give you the Bible street I give you the Bible academically and I give you the Bible spiritually you're going to get it all three ways all three ways you are going to get analogy. You're going to get a street analogy. You're going to get a spiritual analogy. And you're going to get it academically. Boom. Bible. So, now. It's not cocky. That's confidence. I know one thing. If, if, if I'm a football player, <laughs> ain't no way in the world I'm about to turn that corner without no blocker. There's no way in that world I'm about to go running around that corner without a blocker knowing you sitting right there waiting to knock my head off. No, no, no. I need you to pull guard. I need you to pull tackle. I need you to, y'all got me? Okay, y'all gonna run around that corner first. And whoever in my way, y'all knock them down. Here I come. It's the Bible, baby. If I ever jump out there without that book, oh, they're going to knock fire from it. They're going to knock fire from it. But I know they don't know the book. So I got to always make sure my blockers out front. Because if my blockers out front, they got me and they can't touch me. Why? Because I know the book. I know the book. I know the book. You know, you know... You know, you know how, how, how money bag yo and fool in with the little brother name, Pooh in. All my little rappers, all my little rappers, you know how they be standing up there with the money, with all the money in their hand, holding it up to their head and standing up with all that money? I ain't got the money, but I got the money. <laughs> I don't have that money, but I got this money. I, I, this that real money right here. This them real stacks right here. This this real, this, see this right here? See if they ever get this? If they ever get this. Boom. I, 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 I look at Michael Jordan. Mac, Michael Jordan made so many people out of food. Michael Jordan was able to hold the basketball one hand. He let Mike, Mike pull the ball. Mike, 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 Mike used to make fools out of him with the ball. Mike throw the and throw the ball that way. Mike read the ball up there, jump. Mike throw the ball behind him because he was able to do it with one hand. I never seen nobody handle the basketball like Michael Jordan. So now God say, Mike. I didn't call you to be a basketball player, but I need you to handle the word. Mike, I didn't call you to be a rapper, but I need you to run the word. Mike, I didn't call you to be entertaining, but I still need you to be able to display that word. Mike, I gave it to you to know the book, and I know the book. So, if I tell you you don't know the book, because I know you don't know the book, I'm getting your feelings here. Take the book. Well, my, <laughs> take the book. <laughs> take the, <laughs> catch it. <laughs> you got to catch it. <laughs> what the do? What the man name? You had a fishing pole within the thing. <laughs> Guess what? That same rapper, need God. Same basketball player, need God. Same football player, need God. Same entertainer, need God. So no matter what you're doing, you need God. So I went all the way right there. Boom. <laughs> Bible, baby. Where we going, God? We finished, God? Okay, 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 okay. Shut it down? Okay, okay. Tomorrow.
back in the 17th chapter of Revelation. Come out of the 17th chapter, I'm going to show you all of those who were in power in the 16th chapter. He got to fight against all of these people. Why? Because he's dealing with ungodliness, right? Come in the 17th chapter, we're going to break this thing down about false religion. I'm going to show you the seven heads, the ten horns, the seven crowns, right? I'm going to show you that one that was, that is, that's going to be, right? But yet it was eight, and the eight became seven, and the seven going to go with one. We're going to break all of that down, right? And we're going to come through that 17th chapter, and we're going to learn about false religion. Why? Because we're acquiring more and more knowledge. After we have acquired our knowledge, we're going to apply the knowledge. Now, everybody going to try to come and interview that in what you are learning. But yet, though they may be interested it's not for them to know. Why? Because as Paul would say, the division and the vision in the revelation is not for you to always run it. Why? Boom. Tell people what you want to tell them. Don't always tell them what they want to know. Because half of the time, they don't really know what they want to know. They just being like the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees, as well as the Sanhedrin council. They just trying to acquire. <laughs> Your intelligence. No. Bag up all me, babe. I got me. God, you got me, babe? Okay. I got me. You got me, God? Like, okay. God got you, babe. And God gonna always put you on top of game. Focus. Because this week, we gonna deal with that being interested. And all of us, at some time or another, we was interested. That's how we was able to interview. That's why we was able to get into the intelligence of it. But watch the false religion. 10% false religion. Sowing the seed, false religion. All that jumping around highly, false religion. All that putting your hands on me just to touch me, false religion. According to the book. According to the book. So if all of that's false religion, that salvation, that peace, that happiness, that 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 you gonna get this and that, it's false. That's why you're so messed up. A bunch of false religion made that look good, so that can look good. Made that look good, so that can look good. This is why Jesus said, "Y'all walking over unseen graves." Y'all don't even know. Because they didn't came in and addressed this thing up to make it look like something that is not. For the Bible say they was on one accord when they built that tower. One language. Everybody understood one another. Then God read the plate, came down, pew, confused all the languages. He shut that down. But yet man was always, always about having him a one world order. Was it a system? Was it a city? Book of Revelation, break it all down. Nimrod started the great city of Nineveh. Nineveh was always a great city in that book. But when we get to Jesus' time, Jesus said, even the city of Nineveh, even the city of Nineveh, when Jonah went and, gained, and, and that city repented, but we don't know nothing about that, babe. Because <laughs> they ain't teaching us like that from the book. They're too busy begging us. They're too busy lying to us. They're too busy about a seed being sold. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and supplying our every need. Thank you for your slow to anger, but your swift of your mercy. Because you, you didn't have to do this, God, but you're doing it. You didn't have to awaken us like you have, but you have. Because God loves us that much, he wants us to know the truth. All these jokers and their feelings, that's your feelings, not ours. Because God said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Babylon politics, Babylon religion, and Babylon economy, God is going to destroy it. God is going to destroy it. That 16th, that 17th, 
in that 18th chapter of Revelation, we're going to walk it. So don't lose focus of the 13th chapter. The 13th chapter is where the Antichrist is now has moved in power, like in the 10th chapter, Nimrod has moved in power, for the Bible says he was a hunter. He wasn't a hunter of animals. He was a hunter of people. This is why Jesus told Peter, look, say, bro, y'all leave them fish and follow me, and I'm going to teach you to be a fisherman of men. Paul said, when he wrote to Timothy, perilous times will come when men will be lovers of themselves, boastful, covetous, covetous is greedy for money, and out of control, truth breakers. And in this day and time, man is out of control. Paul, God love us that much. Paul, when he wrote, Paul was letting Timothy know this is how leaders are going to act. This is how leaders are going to be. But we stand in the church and we make y'all believe that's y'all. So now y'all running around telling one another, yeah, because in the last days, men going to be, y'all think that's y'all. No, that's the leaders. That's the leaders. That is how leaders are going to be. Paul is raising young Timothy up in the ministry. Paul is putting young Timothy on top of game. And Paul told Timothy to stay away from it. Recognize them and stay away from them. Recognize them and stay away from them. It's all Bible. It's all Bible. But we're not going to teach it to you like that. We're going to go in James and tell you to, to, to watch your mouth. and you No, 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 no. Pastor, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Because James was talking to teachers. Greater condemnation on those who want to be teachers. It's what we're teaching y'all that mess y'all up. And God gonna, God gonna smash us because of that thing in our mouth and what we've been teaching y'all. But we ain't gonna tell you that though, huh? But we gonna tell you don't put your mouth on the man of God when we done messed y'all up. And y'all running around, well, you shouldn't say that that's a man of God. Well, who are you then? You ain't nobody? You think God loved me more than he loved you? You really think that? The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God don't love me no more than he love you. I'm no more important than God than you are. So all that old jibby jibby jab up when your mouth on the man of God, they can't show you that in the book. They can't show you that. But you've been believing that foolishness. Really, people? <clears throat> Ooh, I can read this, dog. I'm going to read that. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start at 19. Romans, Romans 16 and 19 says, let's back it up to 18. Romans 16 and 18 says, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Ha! <laughs> hey, why you be turning this stuff to this stuff like this, bro? How you, how you know where to go? <laughs> for they that are such Serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and far speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Oh, my God. God, let me get my glasses. They, they, might, say, they might say I have my glasses on, God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple, the hearts of the innocent. Verse 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I'm glad, therefore, on your behalf, but ye I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Well, God, I just told him that. I ain't tell him like this, but I just told him that. Can you read? All right. Verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timothy, Timothy, my work fellow, and Lucius and Jason and Sopatar, my kinsmen, salute you. Salute y'all, babe. <laughs> we salute y'all. <laughs> Oh, I love when you turn that book. You be turn that book. <laughs> cool gang. Cool gang. Sitting up under a bunch of 
false religion because they can't show you that in the book. For as Paul would say in Romans, their own bellies. That's doing for you. That 16th, that 17th, that 18th chapter of Revelation, we're going to tear it apart. Takes us all the way back to the 18th chapter of Proverbs, dealing with that 15 and 16th verse. Your gift will make room for you people. Your gift will bring you among great people. You can't buy the gift. The eighth chapter of Acts shows us that. Simeon, he wanted to buy the gift. Simon, you can't buy this. Peter says, hey, bro, you can't buy this. This is something that comes to man and dwells within. We done go. This is what happened. Romans, Romans, I'm going to start at 5, 12 and 5. God, I just told him that yet. Watch this. Romans 12 and 5 says, So we being many are one body in Christ, and every member one another, having then gifts, having then gifts. I just told him this. Having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to you. Say, bro, ain't no way in the world I could do this. I don't, ain't no way in the world the page could turn and it go right there to what I was telling you. It's no way, I'm not that good. Nowhere near that good. I don't know magic. Watch this. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the propension of faith. Our ministry, let us wait. Our ministry, let us wait. Our ministry, let us wait on ministering. Oh my God, what you say, God? Mike, you think you could do what you're doing now? 10 years ago? No. You think you could have did it 20 years ago? No. So you've been waiting, right? Okay. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teach on teaching. Or he that exhort on exhortation. He that give it, let him do it with simplicity. I'm done, God. I'm, I'm finished. Simplicity. That he that rule it with diligence. He that show mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Done. 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 If I tell it to you, you're going to turn it to and show it to you. Just that simple. Just that simple. Just that simple. For he has given all us a gift. But sometimes, most times, all the times, some things, wait for it. Oh, we're going to work it out. Wait for it. Wait for it. Watch how it comes. Watch how it comes. I had to wait, God. Yeah, you had to wait, little brother. All right. We good, God. We good. We good. We ain't finished. Oh, we ain't finished. Don't never let nobody give y'all no one verse. Give me the verses before that. Give me the verses after that. And if you can't, take me to another book. Because it's somewhere else in the Bible. Why? Because the Bible said it take two to be a witness. So don't just tell me this one verse and tell me that's what it say. No, 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 no. Don't, no, you're not going to do me that. Break the book down. Because if you don't break the book down, you don't know the book. And if you don't know the book, God going to smash it from playing. All right, here we go. Got to go see a man about two mules. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But it's long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also in the works that are therein shall be burned up. 
Seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening to the coming day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire should be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we are calling to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth where indwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, in account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him as written unto you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, unstable, wrestle as they do the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things, before be well, lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord, save Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now forever and ever. Amen. 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 People, day two, we're going to run this book. We're going to get this book in. From Revelation all the way to Genesis. That 17 chapter is going to expose a lot of people. A lot of people. False religion. So all that cutting the food, all that ha la 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 you say bro do what's pleasing in the eyesight of God, not man. Man worried about his belly and his pocket. God worried about you. God love you. And God don't love this one more than that one. For the Bible says he's no respecter of person. What God do for me, he'll do for you. What he do for you, he'll do for me. And when we go, God, that's enough. Okay. My hug, man. I love my people, babe. Love my people, man. Yeah. Hey, I laid up. I put some. I put some old pictures back. I put some old pictures up there. I think it's like ninety. Just gotta be like. Let me see. I got shot up in ninety. So them, them pictures, them phones didn't come out to like, them, them big phones didn't come out to 90. 89, we was toting the little phones in the box. They had like phones in the box. They would, they would hook up in the cupboard. So I had that phone. So I must have been right up that got shot up. So it had to be like 90, 91, these pictures, right? <laughs> if I tell it to you, that's because I lived it. All in all, it's all little jibby, jibby, jabby. Say, bro, for all of us who survived those 80s and those early 90s, that stuff going on in the streets today, it's no comparison. Say, bro, it's no comparison to what was going on back then. We survived, say, bro, what we survived back then. What they doing in the streets today, that's elementary. That stuff we was doing back then, oh my God. 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 See, 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 now in this city, we, we probably could just say, okay, maybe it's going to be in the east, maybe uptown. But back then we had 11 projects. 11 projects. We had Buku, if that's a word. We had Buku neighborhoods. And something was always going on in the neighborhood. Something was always going on in the project. But we didn't have social media. We didn't have social media. The streets were way worse then. Now, it's just out of control. It was worse then, but it's out of control now. So it's a difference. So a lot of people, they're just doing stuff just to be doing it. Just doing it. Don't even know why they're doing it. Why? Because the evil one is out of control. It's just out of control. And the peace has been taken out. And it's just all over the place. It's all over the place. And the world is getting smaller and smaller. The city is getting smaller. You walk through the city, all them houses we once had, they're not done no more. All them people once lived in the city, they're not done no more. 
And just like your city getting small, the world is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then here come that one world order. And all the stuff that's in that book is right, happening right before your eyes. But you have set up under so much false religion, you wouldn't even know the truth of it slap. I can't say that, God. Okay, I can't say that. If it slapped you. <laughs> Love y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. We're going to see a man by the meal. See y'all tomorrow. We're going to go. I read them. We're going to break it down verse by verse by verse by verse by verse. I was talking to a pastor the other day, Sunday. He seen me with, he seen me with my maps, right? He said, he said, um, Pastor Matthew, where you get that from? I said, well, you know, I, I give it, to, I'm gonna give this to my members. He said, well, I'm, I've been doing, cause he, I think he teach at the uh, Lutheran school. He said, I've been teaching the children about Paul's journeys, right? He said, how you get that like this and how you get that like that? So I said, yeah. He said, what that's for? I said, that's for you. I said, you teaching this, right? I said, well, yeah, you go, for real? I say, bro, I ain't on that old hating kind of time. If I have material that can help you, here. Yeah. I ain't going to charge you for it. Here. Yeah. You want it? Here. Yeah. I'm going to just give it to you. About this time last year, I was watching a pastor on here, right? So I told his member, I said, say, bro, I got some material that I could give your pastor to help him with his teachings because, you know, he... You know, so I told the dude. So the pastor got offended. How, bro? I'm trying to help you. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. So because somebody help me, oh my, help me, you baby. I don't want you running around here teaching you people no false religion. So if, if God bless me to have it, yeah, I'm not going to sell it to you. But I don't want you to play the people for it. I don't want to give it to you and make them pay you for it when nobody charged you for it. God didn't charge me for what I know. God, I didn't, God didn't, God, no. He didn't say, Mike, man, hey, Mike, man, I'm going to give you this if you give me that. No, he didn't do me that. He didn't do me that. He said, here you go, Mike, babe. I said, okay, God. So I tell y'all, here y'all go, babe. Why? God gave it to me. He ain't charged me that for it. So what I look like charging y'all for something God gave me to give to y'all. Makes sense to me, huh? Makes sense to y'all. Makes sense to me. I do say that's enough.